I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, I rise to inform the House about the decision of Rape and Domestic Violence Services Australia to cease operating their uh, contract under the 1800 Respect National Counselling Service. And this is a decision that will affect everyone uh, in our state, indeed in our nation, and particularly those in my electorate of Maitland. Uh, in the issue of domestic violence and rape uh, are really important issues, uh, and th this service previously operated a trauma-informed service uh, for the government. Now, going into the 2016 election, there was a clear indication that more funds were needed to cope, cope with the growing demands for trauma-informed counselling, such as this world's best practice uh, counselling, on the basis that that service uh, was providing it to people from the Royal Commission into sexual, Child Sexual Abuse, the increased focus on domestic violence and the awareness raising programs that were uh, being undertaken by the federal government. Now, the, the sum total of trying to up that uh, commitment would have been in the order of some three or four million dollars at the most, and yet the federal government in their wisdom decided to uh, put that out to tender and they triaged the service through MHS so that people calling a domestic violence or rape crisis centre then had to be triaged. Now, this goes against all established practice. It's very clear, it's, it's lots of learning in this space, that when victims of rape, when victims of domestic violence have to tell their story multiple times to different people who are not experts, who are not good at taking those referrals, they do not proceed to uh, counselling, they do not proceed to court, we do not get convictions, perpetrators continue to uh, commit offences and offend. It goes through every, against every principle of prevention that we as governments in uh, this nation would have and it's, it's just a shame. So that was the federal government's first response. They have then called in very last minute for an EOI from Rape and Domestic Violence Services Australia to tender for that service and then awarded it not to RDVSA but to, a cons to four different services. So breaking up the expertise across the nation and also uh, putting constraints around them which made it untenable for them to have that contract. Things like asking that or demanding that all the files uh, would be provided to MHS uh, and that those files would be subject to subpoenas. And if anyone has ever listened to a rape victim talking about their experiences, usually as part of the emotional response they will say, what could I have done? That is a human natural thing. But if we see perpetrators accessing that kind of information in their counselling files and then using that against them at court, we see a perpetration a uh, perpetuation of the victim blaming that has happened in sexual assault in uh, this nation, indeed around the world since time immemorial. Now, RDVSA uh, was established by women within our community almost 50 years ago. They recognised a need for men, women and children who have been victims of sexual assault and domestic violence to receive special support. Um, they have been doing that as 1800 Respect, as part of the National Plan to Reduce Violence Against Women and Children, and they are now in the appalling situation where uh, they will not be getting uh, able to provide that service. Now, under the arrangements with the federal government, they were told that their new contract would only be uh, less than their current contract. Special service providers would have their pays cut by $70,000. This is an appalling contract, and it uh, not only affects the employees of RDSA, but their uh, many clients. And as this stands, um, you know, we need to see what the government is going to do here, because there are up to 70 frontline domestic violence, sexual assault and domestic violence uh, counsellors in our state who will be probably losing their jobs as a result of this untenable and unfair contract being offered. And so those people, how will their redundancies be paid? Because as a not-for-profit office of operator, RDVSA is uh, are not allowed to make a profit, so therefore they won't have enough money for redundancies. We will be calling on the government to step up and to provide uh, redundancies for those employees. 
um, and that we make sure that this important service continues in the limited capacity it will have going forward. Thank you.